What's going on guys? In today's video, we're looking at the first trade of the 2021 offseason. Nashville sending Victor Arvidsson to the LA Kings for a second and third round pick. I know I'm a couple days late on this one, guys, but I was actually out of town for Canada Day, so nothing I could do. Still want to take a look at this, though, in games. Honestly, I was very surprised to see Nashville trading Arvidsson. I thought they'd be trading a guy like Johansson or Duchesne with a big contract, maybe one of the three defensemen, but Victor Arvidsson, for some reason, was just not on my radar. So LA gave up a second round pick in 2021. It's actually their second round pick along with a third round pick in 2022. Again, it's their third round pick, but they still have a third there from Pittsburgh in 2022. Still have a second in 2021 from St. Louis, as well as a couple thirds. So they definitely had the draft capital to make this trade. And I mean, when you look at LA Kings roster, they really needed some depth, some help for Kopitar in terms of the offense. A lot of good young players like By Hill, like Turcotte, Velarde, Kaliev, Kupari, all those guys coming up, but no one really established as a top six forward. So I feel like Arvidsson honestly should be a perfect fit in LA. Now in terms of Nashville trading him, like I said, it's a bit of a surprise to me. I thought he was a solid player, good contract there, making 4.25 million, only 83 overall. So you can see his value in game actually isn't that high. Uh, second line forward there, toxic potential, sniper, good shot, good hands, pretty quick as well. Uh, if you look at his contract, 4.25 million for three more years is obviously that fourth year has basically happened in real life. Look at his career stats here. Uh, this year, I believe he had 25 points in 50 games, so literally a point every other game. Last year, 20 and 57. His best years for sure, 16, 17, and 17, 18. 61 points respectively. I know 16, 17, of course, was the year they actually won the Stanley Cup run. Uh, if you look at his playoff stats there, again, about a point every other game with 27 and 59. So, like I said, I feel like he's a solid top six player. He's still only 27, like he's not that old. So I feel like Nashville probably trade him for a few reasons. The first is just to clear some salary space. He was making 4.2 million, which is a decent amount. They'll probably use that money for a free agent or something like that. Also, you can see he's starting to decline after his two 61 point seasons. He put up 48, then 28, then 25 this year. Now, a big reason for that is he has had some injury issues, but if he can stay healthy, Playing a lot of men to LA, I think he could definitely bounce back. Again, he's not that old. But then the third reason I think is what I'm hearing uh, from some of the beat reporters in Nashville is that they simply just wanted to shake up. They felt like their core wasn't getting it done. So they decided to shake it up by trading Arvidsson. I'm willing to bet they're not done. Could definitely see Duchesne or Johansson being moved. One of the defensemen as well, potentially. You never even know. Maybe they give Seattle like a second round pick to take uh, Johansson's contract. As you can see in game, not a lot of value in your 83 overall making 8 million bucks. It's a lot of money and a lot of terms still left. So Arvidsson, second or third round pick on LA's side is actually a lot more value than him. In real life, I felt like it was a fair trade, maybe in a bit of a win for LA, just because they have those extra picks. You're getting a known commodity back in Arvidsson, who's still young, good top six player. But in game, uh, looks like Nashville wins this one by a landslide. As you saw, the trade value was about double on LA's side. And after the trade, guys, you can see the LA Kings still have a seller team stats, which means the game considers them to be a bottom eight team still. Now, obviously, adding Arvidsson to the lineup is going to help them out a lot. You can see I actually have him playing first line here with Kopitar and Athena CU. Are these lines going to be accurate at all? I don't think so. I feel like, you know, a lot of teams are going to be making a ton of moves this offseason. Not only do the expansion draft, but also the draft. Uh, flat salary cap. There's going to be a lot of action, I think. So this is just kind of what we're going off of right now. Brown, uh, Campe there, and Anderson Dolan, Wagner, Velarde, Moore, Lemieux, I have fellow Grunstrom. Now, I don't have any like the young kids in the lineup who definitely could make the team if they have a really good offseason. So guys like Byfield, Turcotte, Kaliev, Anderson, Kupari, I could see honestly all five of them potentially making the NHL team here. As I don't think Afton C is coming back. A couple of those other guys aren't the greatest. So should be a lot of spots up for grabs on that Kings lineup. Looking at their defense too. After Doughty, there's really not much there, so I feel like the Kings are probably going to be very active in the trade market as well as free agency, trying to add some defensemen. Also, guys, right here, I'll give you your first look at Victor Arvidsson as an LA King. I'm not going to lie, his game face there doesn't really look like him at all, but there you can see Arvidsson 33 with the LA Kings jersey. Doesn't look too bad. I'm now trying this trade as a national predator. You can see that the LA Kings are interested in Arvidsson as well. They have their third round pick in 2022 on the block, but not their second rounder this year. Again, the value is at least double on LA's side. I should have mentioned as well that the trade difficulty is set to medium. So even on easy, I don't think this goes through. And yeah, you can see LA there rejects the trade. So in their mind, probably Arvidsson for two thirds is more fair, at least in game. Uh, the second and third was too much. So we'll see if they give us two thirds here for him. The trade's still rejected, wow. Uh, so a second and a third, like I said, in game, they feel Nashville made up pretty well. Let's try a third and fourth round pick for him now. And that gets it done. So yeah, uh, the game, like I said, feels LA definitely paid a bit too much for Arvidsson, but in real life, I feel like it was very fair. 
LA maybe even got a bit of a deal just due to Arvidsson's kind of injury rival seasons the last couple of years. Now it's kind of crazy guys, after that trade, Nashville also has a team status of seller. I believe they were a conservative seller before that. When you're looking at their forward group here, the first line's not bad. Forsberg, Johansson, Duchesne. Uh, speaking of Forsberg, I saw he was not happy with the trade. Kind of makes sense. Uh, both him and Arvidsson are Swedish. And I don't think Nashville should be trying to piss off Forsberg because he's only got one year left before he becomes a free agent. I feel like he's their best forward on the team by far. You definitely want to keep him. So uh, we'll see what happens with that next summer. After that first line though, Yarncroft, Granlin, Kunin, Granlin's a penny UFA, Cousins, Hala, Tolvanen. Tolvanen is, you know, starting to look better as he gets more NHL experience. Fourth line, Richardson, Seasons, since Grimaldi's fine. Yossi, Ellis, Fabro, Ekholm, that's really what's helping Nashville. Berwick, Benning's a fine bottom pair. Then of course they have Saros as their starting goalie. I feel like he really proved this year that he's one of the better goalies in the NHL. And as you guys can see here, he actually needs a new contract this offseason, so I'm going to be very curious to see how much he gets paid. Pecorino, I think, is either coming back on a cheap contract to be his backup, or he's going to retire. I really don't see him playing with another team other than Nashville. But looking at that Nashville team there, I think goaltending's fine for sure. Defense is fine. In terms of their forwards though, like, if you're going to lose Granlin and Halla, there's not a whole lot there. Tomasino could make the team next season, but I still feel like they have to add at least one top nine forward, one top six forward this offseason. If they are trying to compete, maybe they actually want to do a bit more of a rebuild, try and get a guy like Shane Wright next season, Carbert the year after that. Gonna be very interested to see what Nashville does over this summer, but that's me, guys, for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave that thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section which team you think won this trade. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the sub button. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.